In this video, we will be taking a look at a wax motor. Now, most people have not heard of a wax motor or know what they're used for. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how they work. And I'm also going to disassemble the housing to show you what each component looks like inside this housing. The wax motor that you see right here was removed from a dishwasher. If you have a scrap dishwasher laying around, you could just disassemble the door and usually these are used in the area around the soap dispenser. These are also used for other applications. I have a video that I put out showing how my GY6 enricher works and it works the exact same way as this wax motor. These are also used as actuators in aircraft and many other applications as well. Now the one I have here is 120 volt or 240 volt, 50, 60 hertz, and how this works, as soon as power is applied to these wires right here, this unit begins to heat up. It gets very warm or slightly hot, but not to the point where you're going to get burned by touching the plastic housing. After that begins to heat up, on this end right here, you see a plastic piston sticking out. That will begin to extend by about 3 16 to a quarter of an inch further than you see right here. Now these devices can be extremely useful if you'd like to use electricity to trigger a mechanical device. As the plunger pushes out, it can trigger that device. Inside this housing is a small metal cylinder with very thick walls and inside that cylinder is a piston. As the cylinder becomes heated up inside the cylinder, there is a wax. Once that wax begins to melt, the volume of that wax begins to increase. Now because the wax has nowhere to go inside that little chamber, what happens, pressure begins to build and it pushes this piston outward. Once the wax cools, there's a return spring in here that pushes it back all the way in to the point where the wax has been cooled and the volume has been returned to normal. So as it heats up, the volume of the wax expands causing the piston to push outward and as it cools the piston will retract with the help of the spring to the original volume of the wax. Now the way the heating is done inside here pushed up against the metal chamber is a PTC inrush limiter or a PTC thermistor is a certain amount of resistance in this case it's around 850 when it's cold when current is applied the PTC begins to heat up as the PTC heats up, it's called positive temperature coefficient. So as the temperature rises, the resistance rises. As the resistance rises, less current goes into the PTC and the heating basically halts and maintains a certain level. Once the current is removed from these wires, the PTC cools off and the volume of wax also cools off and then the piston will retract. So what I'm going to do now is apply 120 volts to this wire and we will take a look at how this extends. Alright, I'm going to plug it in. Keep an eye on the distance between the base of the black plunger and the tip. As it heats, you'll see it extend. Just keep staring right there. And you can see it's slowly pushing out. This is basically the same as a mini hydraulic ram. So it's extremely difficult if you attempted to push that piston back into that metal chamber. So this is very strong and has the ability to push very hard on a mechanical setup that you may have. So this could be very useful. And that's about it. That's about as far as it goes. The PTC in here now, the current to it has been reduced greatly because it heated up and it will maintain that temperature. What we're going to do now is remove the power from the wall and you can see it retract.
Another good thing about these wax motors is that the movement is extremely smooth as it goes out and as it returns. Unlike a solenoid where it might go pop, pop, if you're looking for something for an application that needs to be triggered extremely smooth like this, then this might be the way to go is to use a wax motor. All right, this is pulling back in. I'll wait for it to fully retract. And then the next thing I'm going to do is open up the housing and show you what the inside looks like. Now when I open up this clamshell, there's a spring. I have to be careful that doesn't fly out. Let me just carefully pull it off. And there we go. And that's what it looks like. Right here is that thick metal chamber with the wax inside of it. Right over here on the side is where the PTC is bonded to the chamber. PTCs could be just like these here. PTC inrush. I have another video showing how these work. Alright. This one here is very similar except it's round instead of rectangular. And this could be bonded the same way right against the side. Let me pop the spring out. This is just a return spring. Okay. Now that I look at this, this is not really bonded, the PTC, to the RAM. There's a thermal compound and it's being held in place with clips, spring clips, tightly against this little wax motor here. Right there you can see the piston. That's the part that extends and then retracts. This PTC used for 120 volts or 240 has a cold resistance of around 850 and as current's applied and heats up it goes well above 2000 ohms. Now if you wanted to make this a 12 volt version instead of a 120 volt version what you would do is you would take another PTC of a much lower resistance like you see here. This one is around 6 ohms. You would put it in position where this other one is. Put the spring clips back with the thermal compound and now you have a 12 volt version. As this heats up the current will begin to drop off and the piston will remain furthest position out. The only purpose of the spring is once the unit cools off again it helps push the piston all the way back into the starting point so it's ready to extend the next time it's heated. Hopefully now you have a good understanding of how a wax motor works. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.